Hey guys, I welcome you all to the fourth session of IntelliPads Python week. Last session, we learn about Python functions and data types. Today, we'll see on the Python classes, objects and flow control. So before moving on with the session, please subscribe to our channel. And also hit the bell icon for the upcoming updates from our channel. And also, if you enjoy our content, you can leave a like. Python classes and object. So what is a class and object in Python? Well, Python is an object-oriented programming language and almost everything in Python is an object with its properties and method. And a class, it's like a blueprint for creating objects. Let's see an example of a class. We define a class as class space class name colon and inside that you define its objects. If you want to call an object, let's see how you call it. You are defining a variable as obj1 and you are assigning all the object of my class to it. And if you want to print one of the variable of my class, so you can access it using obj1. All right. So this was about the classes and object in Python. Next is the Python flow control. Well, these flow controls are the one which control the flow of execution of your program. So we have six different types of flow control in Python. If else, nested if else, for, while, break and continue. Let's discuss them one by one, starting with if else. So what is this if else? Let's see its syntax. If the condition is true, then execute statement one, else execute statement two. It's as simple as that. Let's see the flow of execution. You start it, you check the condition. If the condition is true, then execute block one. If the condition is false, then go to the else part and execute block two. Fine. Yeah, this block one, it comes under if part. All right. Let's move next. Let's move ahead. Next is nested if else. Let's see the syntax. If condition one is true, then execute statement one. Else, if condition two is true, then execute statement true. If none of them is true, then execute statement three. Let's check the flow control of it. Start, check for condition one. That is, if condition one is true. So if condition one is true, then the statement executed with the if block is executed. That is, execute block one. If first condition is false, then go and check for the second condition, that is else if condition. Now if else if condition is true, then your second block would be executed. If none of them are true, then finally the else block would be executed. That is execute block three. And yeah, remember one thing, there is no condition associated with an else block. Else block would only execute if all the ever conditions are false. Fine? All right. Next is the for, let's see the syntax. For iterating variable in sequence, colon execute statement. Let's check. Well, it's the example of a program. Like start, we are defining a variable as count equals zero. Then execute statement, then increment the value of count by one. And then check the condition if count is less than 10. Is one less than 10? Yeah, the condition is true. So again, repeat it and again, execute the statement again, increment the value of count by one that is count become two and again, check if two is less than three and so on. Continue this till 10 is less than 10. And when this thing arrives that 10 is less than 10, your condition become false and you exit the loop. So this is how a for loop work. Let's understand this in a better way with an example. So this is our code. All right. We have defined a list fruits as apple, banana, and cherry for X and fruits. X and fruit of zero is apple. Then print X. X is what? Apple. So apple would be printed as the output. Now again, what we'll do? We'll again go back and check for X and fruits. Now X of one is banana. Then print X. X is what? Banana. So it would print as banana. Again, it will go back X and fruit of two is what cherry print X cherry would be printed. Now, if it goes back, there's nothing left in the fruit. So nothing would be printed. All right. So you got the final output as apple, banana and cherry. Fine. All right. So let's move ahead. Next is the while. 
the syntax for this is while condition is true then execute set of statement under the while start check for the condition if it is true then execute block one and then again repeat the loop until the condition is true in case the condition is false then just exit the loop let's understand this better with an example this is my code like a equal 1 and variable part i got a equal 1 while a is less than 5 is a equal 1 less than 5 yeah condition is true then what print the value of a just a quick info guys IntelliPad provides online Python certification training mentored by industry experts. The course link of which is given in the description below. Now, let's continue with the session. Alright, so we got the output as 1. After getting the output, increase the value of a by 2. So, a plus equal to 2. That is 1 plus 2 equal 3. Now again go back to the loop, check for the condition is 3 less than 5, condition is true. Then again go to the print a part, what is a? 3, so print a. So you will get the output as 3, again increment the value of a to 2, that is a equal 5. Now check the condition, is 5 less than 5? No. I think here we got the condition as false. So we got the final output as 1 and 3. Alright, let's move ahead. Here's a, another example A equal 1. Just a quick info, guys. Test your knowledge of Python by answering this question Which of the following is not an oops concept? A. Encapsulation B. Polymorphism C. Exception D. Abstraction Comment your answer in the comment section below. Subscribe to IntelliPad to know the right answer. Now, let's continue with the session. In the variable part A equal 1, check the condition. Why A is less than 3? Is 1 less than 3? Yeah, condition is true. Inside the while part, the first condition that we check, if a mod 2 equal equal 0, is 1 mod 2 equal equal 0? No, the condition is false. So, we'll jump to the else part. So, we'll jump to the else part and print a is odd. Now, since the value of a currently is 1, so 1 is odd. Fine. Then what we'll do, we'll increment the value of a by 1. That is 1 plus 1 equal 2. Fine. Now again we'll go back to the while part. Now we'll check if 2 is less than 3. Yeah, the condition is true. Fine. Now what we'll do, we'll jump to the if part. And check if 2 mod 2 equal equal 0. Yeah, the condition is true. So this time we'll check if 2 mod 2 equal equal 0. So yeah, the condition is true. So what it will do, it will print the if part statement, that is a is even, a in this case was 2, so 2 is even, fine, so this is our output. Next again it will go and increment the value of a by 1, so now 2 becomes 3. Again it will go back to the while part, is 3 less than 3, the condition is false. So your final output is 1 is odd and 2 is even. Fine. So this was about the while statement. Let's move ahead and learn about break. So this break statement, it is used to break the loop at a certain condition. Alright. Let's understand this with the help of this flowchart. Start it, check the condition. If the condition is true, then check the break, then check the break condition. If the break condition is false, then only execute block 1 and repeat the loop. If the break condition comes to be true, then break the entire loop and then exit the loop. Alright? Let's check it with an example up here. For example, a equal 10.
while a is greater than 0 check for if a is not equal to 5 if a is not equal to 5 then print a else break it fine let's execute it sorry just manage a minus minus a minus equal to 1 fine stop it let's mention it up here So we got the output as 9, 8, 7 and 6, fine. So the moment loop becomes 5, we got exited out of the loop. Next we have is the continue statement. Well the continue statement won't break the loop. So it will just skip the statement in case the condition is true. Let's understand this with the help of this flowchart. So start, check for condition 1. If it is true, then check for continue condition. If it is false, then execute block and repeat. Then in case if the condition is true, then stop executing that particular block for that particular iteration and again go back and repeat and check the condition. Just a quick info guys. IntelliPad provides online Python certification training mentored by industry experts. The course link of which is given in the description below. Okay guys, we've come to the end of this session. I hope this session was helpful and informative for you. If you have any queries, leave a comment down below. Thanks for watching.